vocalist. She's extremely talented, and she is frequently invited to sing at Celebration of Life and Memorial services. She's a soprano, and when she sings, she sounds like an angel. And she was recently invited to sing at the burial of a homeless man. Uh, another friend was officiating, and they wanted her to sing. And she said, of course she would. This was a man who had no family and claimed no friends. So the burial was going to be at the Pauper's Cemetery. So she readied herself, and she was on her way, and she is self-proclaimed directionally challenged. So she used her GPS, and it was a rural setting, and her signal failed, and she was lost. Finally, she arrived at the site, and it was late. It was very late. Uh, there was no sign of anyone. There were some diggers around, but there was no hearse. There was no one from the funeral home. And she felt so heartbroken and disappointed that she had let this experience pass by. So she decided that she was going to sing anyway. And there were uh, diggers around, but they had stopped for lunch and they were sitting and eating their lunch. And she walked to the grave and she noticed that the vault had already been sealed. She paused for a moment and then she sang. She sang her favorite song, Amazing Grace. And little by little, the workers who had stopped to eat came to the gravesite and started to weep. And their crying made her cry, and together they cried, and she sang. And she was so filled with the Spirit. She completed her song and voiced a heartfelt benediction. And she made her way to the car. And as she was closing the door to her car, she heard one of the workers say, Oh, my goodness gracious, I have never seen or heard anything like this before in my life. And I have been putting in septic tanks for 25 years. Apparently, she was still lost. Oh, the gift of humor, or the attempt of humor. Humor is powerful in our life. And the Dalai Lama and the Archbishop Desmond Tutu share a great deal of humor. Now, they are the authors of the book we've been studying, the Book of Joy. And they identify humor as one of the pillars of joy. And as you might imagine, these two gentlemen have experienced much in their life. Both have experienced suffering and pain. The Dalai Lama being exiled from his home. Desmond Tutu spending time in prison in his work to end apartheid. And yet both of these men turn to laughter. They turn to laughter often. In this week that they spent together being interviewed to create this book, they laughed frequently at themselves and with each other. Life can be very dull without good, hard laughter. And after humor, they speak of another pillar of joy, the pillar of humility. And it brings uh, to mind the word humus. Uh, uh, humility comes from the word humus. And humus means of the earth. So when we practice humility, we have our feet on the earth. We are grounded in who we are, in our truth, and we are humbled by that. Our authors remind us that being humbled keeps our feet on the ground, and it helps us from being all puffed up with ourselves. 
And they remind us that although they are two incredible people who are known all over the world, there's rarely a place that either of them can go where they're not recognized. And yet they count themselves as only one. Only one of the seven billion people who walk the earth. They see themselves that simply, that they are one of the many. They think that they simply have a different platform than most people to, to speak and to be heard. They affirm always that no one is greater or less than another. That we are all part of that web of humanity. And that's how they see humanity. And when we see ourselves in that uh, idea of our oneness, of our interconnectedness, that our need to be together with each other, either consciously, when we don't take ourselves too seriously, we can remain in that state of humbleness. That's the namaste, namaskar spirit. We see one another. And whether that means that I see you right here in the sanctuary, or I see and feel your presence across space and time, we are still in that namaste spirit. We are in that oneness. And yet we have that ego part of ourself that can carry us into a place of pride, pridefulness, and a place of arrogance. Arrogance is rooted in our insecurities. Our arrogance is rooted in that maybe I'm not enough idea. Maybe I'm not as much as someone else. Maybe I'm too much of something. But when we drop that comparison and we live into that spaciousness of who we are, we as individuals come into this life as us, uniquely and beautifully and wonderfully as us. There are no two of us alike. There's no one else on this planet just like you. There's no one else that looks exactly like you. There's no one else that shows up just like you. We all show up differently as that presence of love that Daniel Maymont sang about. We all show it differently. We all embody it differently. Compassion and kindness and peace and harmony. We all express it in different ways. So don't be shy. Because the world is here waiting and wanting the way you express. Someone is waiting for love as you and only you can show to them. We are all so very unique with all of our idiosyncrasies, all of our foibles. We're perfect just as we are. So being humble and living with humility is actually a great strength in keeping us free from pride and arrogance. We are softened when we are humble. And when we live in that softness and that ease, we can listen to others more easily. We can listen to both sides of the debate, so to speak. We can listen to an opinion that's vastly different than ours. And in this last year or so, we've experienced a lot of that, be it politically, be it with social justice, be it with whether to wear a mask or not to wear a mask, or to have a vaccine or not to have a vaccine. When we are humble and soft, we can allow others to have opinions that are different than ours. So when I lay down, my rightness, when I lay down the ideas that I have of the way the world and everyone in it must be or should be,
then I am open to that realm of possibility for what life might be. And those possibilities are endless. And when we have that lack of need to be right, which makes someone else wrong, when we set aside the musts of life and the shoulds of life, we can be in the flow of life and the enjoyment of life. And we move from our heart. We live from our, our heart space. And that allows us to flow into that idea that we are really all the same. Regardless of our faith, our gender, we all want the same things for our families, for our friends, and for ourselves. And that comes down mostly to love. So we are all either giving love or asking for love. So Jesus was a being who exampled this humbleness. When he stood with the woman at the well, free of any judgments, free of any concerns, it was human to human. Jesus spoke gently and lovingly to the woman at the well. It was as Jesus walked among the lepers that he showed his humbleness. He is an example of living that idea of no one is above another. We are all really on the same playing field. And these arbitrary markers that we use to divide and sort one another and to make ourselves separate from others are so human in design. They are not real in God's eyes. They are our own constructs. And when we put them down, we can then look at one another and see that we are all of that same source. We are all created in that image and likeness of God, that image and likeness which is love, that one power. We are all created from love. So uh, the human, the humor and the humility is followed by acceptance as another pillar of joy. Acceptance. Now the authors say that acceptance is vastly different from giving up. Vastly different. And they talk about acceptance and the Archbishop goes back to some of the other pillars of joy to talk about acceptance. He goes back to perception that we talked about last week. And when we see life with that wider perspective, when we lift our vision higher and we don those God goggles and we see with the eyes that God sees, then our whole perception of life changes. And we can sometimes see our place, our role in the dramas of our life. Those little vignettes that we create or that are so filled with drama. And then we can move to humility and humbleness and soften ourselves. And when we are able to laugh at ourselves, then we can be in a space of accepting life the way it is. All of its imperfections, seeming imperfections, and all of its beauty and grace. And the Dalai Lama quickly mentions that, you know, acceptance is not, it, uh, uh, it, it's at the absolute opposite of resignation and of defeat. And now both the Dalai Lama and the uh, Archbishop are activists for creating a better world. They've both been very vocal and active in their life on social justice and equality, and yet they move into that space of activism, 
from a consciousness of acceptance. And the archbishop didn't accept the inevitability that apartheid must be, but he accepted the idea that right here and right now we're experiencing apartheid. And by that acceptance of this is what is, he could move into loving ways to change that without violence in peaceful ways. And he said these beautiful words, we are meant to live in joy. This does not mean that life will be easy or painless. It means that we can turn our face to the wind and accept that this is the storm that we must pass through. This is the storm that we must pass through. It's not giving up. It's surrendering to what is. And for me, a word that I use to describe that is yielding. And I've noticed on the highways that there are very few drivers that really know how to yield and we encounter them often. But yielding is a very wonderful practice. So when we yield, we allow ourselves to move into the traffic that already is. Now that might mean that we need to slow our speed or increase our speed to make that a smooth, action, but we move into what's already going down the highway. And as we move forward, then we can go to our destination. But first we have to yield. We shift. We realign. We might change lanes. But we move into the traffic that's already in place. So as we move into life that's already in place, we don't have to settle for it. We can change it, but we can move into it gently. By accepting the traffic that's already there, I adjust. And then I get to my destination safely without causing any dangerous crashes or injuring people. And the Archbishop shares his thoughts about this pillar called acceptance. It allows us to move into the fullness of joy. We live more fully in the space of joy. And it allows us to live life on life's terms. So who here has tried to resist life's terms? Yeah? No, I've seen heads nodding, but mine's the only hand that's up. When we try to resist life's terms, we suffer. We have stress and anxiety. We become sad. But when we say, this is life's terms, this is what I have to live with, how can I make this into something that is robust and beautiful and luscious? How can I make this life the way I would like it to be? Or how can I assimilate what is happening into the goodness that's here? It allows us to avoid struggling against those day-to-day -day things that show up in our life, like traffic. And acceptance doesn't have room for resisting. Accepts acceptance puts us right into the flow of life. And the Dalai Lama adds his perspective too, that the stress and anxiety that we experience in life, it comes from the expectation of how life should be. How life should be. What we should be able to do. What we should have. And, oh my goodness, friends, how often life is not like we think it should be. And to get through the bumpiness, to get through the suffering, we can shift into that acceptance and avoid the stress and anxiety and the dis 
satisfaction and move on to the joy and happiness. Both His Holiness and the Dalai Lama and the Desmond Tutu are two men who embody these pillars of joy. They have lived their life with that God's eye perspective. Maybe not every moment of every day, but consistently. They have risen their visions to God's. And they have shifted the suffering that they experienced in life and looked at it with a wider view, how they can use it for good. They have accepted what came into their lives. And they were very powerful voices for activism, for changing those things that came into their life to make our world a better place. And they demonstrated enormous humility while they were in prison. The process of being exiled called both of those men to be humble. And they were powerful beyond measure in our world. We listen to their words of wisdom. We follow their guidance of discernment. And they respond with humor, with great humor to what is happening around them. And they are steadfast. And they are focused forces for change. So they live these pillars. And, and the, this perspective and the humor and the humility and the acceptance, those are pillars of the mind. And next week we will savor the pillars of the heart, forgiveness and gratitude and compassion and generosity. So the thought I leave you with today is this. It's a quote from the book of joy. Discovering more joy does not save us from the inevitability of hardship or heartbreak. In fact, we may cry more easily, but we will laugh more easily too. Perhaps we are just a little more 